All right, here we go with the big ideas of chapter five. So chapter five is pretty much gonna be what leads up to the Revolutionary War and the war itself. Here we go. So remember that Britain broke as a joke. Okay, they got a lot of wars going on. They got a lot of things happening. All right, they were fighting the wars over in Europe. They were also doing it over on the North American continent. So they're pretty economically exhausted. So they're looking for some money and they're gonna start to collect some taxes, okay? All right, so the first thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna throw on the Sugar Act, okay? Anytime I say act, that means tax. This is a tax on French molasses, all right? Um, in response to this, how we're going to get back at them is we're going to ignore this tax and we're just going to continue to smuggle our French molasses, all right? This is essentially a new navigation act, okay? Which means that no more salutary neglect. We're now in deep and we are responsible and Britain's looking at us, okay? So um, this was seen as pretty controversial because again, we had no representation over in parliament, so we're pretty upset, okay? Colonists are gonna begin arguing that they're being treated as weird, quote unquote, like slaves, okay? So that's gonna be um, the vocabulary that they will use to describe how Britain is treating them and how they feel. All right, so then we're going to get the Stamp Act, okay? This is gonna be a huge deal. This is gonna tax paper. This is gonna tax um, all of that stuff. And then it is eventually going to be repealed. We're going to protest it. We're going to fight back on it. Um, and so they will eventually take it back. But uh, during this time, again, Ben Franklin just asking for representation, okay? At the same time was the Quartering Act. So the Quartering Act is when we're going to house our slate or our um, our redcoats. So all redcoats can walk into a house and demand to be lodged and fed. And the Quartering Act says we have to do it. We're obviously going to protest. This is where we get the good old tar and feather. Um, that was our biggest one. So definitely done during the tea act. We would tar feather. Then we would pour scalding hot tea down the tax collector's throats. So um, they would get third degree burns on their body and then we would scald their throats and that would be how we would protest. So the Stamp Act Congress is where we're going to have the nine colonies come together. Okay. They're going to appeal back to Britain, all right, to um, repeal the stamp and the sugar acts, all right, and they are going to win this round, but only this round, okay. Um, the next thing we're also going to get established is the Sons of Liberty. These guys are going to be the ones that lead protests. Oftentimes, they'll go to the pub, they'll come up with their strategy, they'll talk about it, everybody will drink, and then they'll head on out, um, and they'll begin their protests. So, might explain why we thought pouring scalding hot tar and all over humans was a good idea. I don't know. All right. So next we're going to get kind of the um, intellectual um, roots to resistance. So the idea is that these are going to begin shifting from an economic protest to really a political protest. And the idea is, right, we're just, we're not going to just be angry about you're taxing us and we're angry about it. It's going to be you're taxing us, but we have no representation and this is unfair. Okay. Um, so we're going to begin burning tax collectors in effigy. All right. So basically you just make a image of a tax collector out of straw and whatever else you have, and then you set it on fire. All right. Again, the vocabulary used during this time is that we here in the colonies are slaves to parliament. Again, taxing us without representation. So that language um, is being used again in this situation. All right. Um, Charles Townsend is going to become the prime minister. He's going to step in and he's going to issue the Townsend Acts of 1767, which is, that's just tax everything that the colonies can't produce because then, you know, they just pay a lot whenever they have to buy this new product. So uh, what this is going to lead to is a boycott. And this is where the Daughters of Liberty are going to come in. They are going to homespin cloth. They are going to make products um, at home together, um, women banning together to to do this, and they're going to boycott all British goods. Like, if you are seen buying a British good, uh, you're going to want to run and hide because people are going to ridicule you and probably um, take you to the center of town and string you up. So you need to be careful. 
All right, this is just an image of troop deployments. So um, 1763, end of the um, French and Indian War, when we draw the proclamation line, okay, compared to 1775 when things are ramping up with all the taxes. So notice the increase, all right, in the Boston area. All right, so the proclamation line of 1763 is super important, pretty important, very important, really important, and the idea is this, uh, Britain fights this war with the colonists against the French and their Native American allies. Britain and the colonists win. Britain then draws a line and says, hey, don't go cross this line and agitate the natives anymore. We're not going to help you out if you get into another war. We, on the other hand, are like, wait, oh, we fought a war so we can go west, and now you're telling us that we can't. So we're pretty much going to ignore the proclamation line of 1763. Um, so that's just one more problem that Britain is going to have with us. All right, so then, okay, we're going to get the Boston Massacre, right? This is the colonists versus the Redcoats. All right, there's going to be five colonists shot and killed on this day. All right, um, there's the sovereignty debate, right? So do we let colonists govern themselves or do we not? Britain very soon is going to decide not is the answer, okay? Um, this is an image, um, the famous woodcut of the Boston Massacre done by Paul Revere. Um, tensions are mounting, and if you notice in the image, there's no image of Crispus Attucks, which was the one uh, mulatto gentleman um, of black descent that was killed during this confrontation because how can you appeal to the South to come help you rally against Britain if one of the people you are holding up as a martyr is the type of person that they would normally enslave? So he's going to be wiped from that image. Um, all right, so then the next tax that's going to come is the T Act. All right, this is going to pretty much try to help um, the British tea company, all right, and make tea really cheap. So yes, the point of the Tea Act was to make tea from the British East India Company cheaper than the Dutch tea. And we were angry about that. We didn't want cheaper tea. Or more than likely, we just didn't want to be told where to get our tea from. Okay, but just know that this tax actually it was a cut in price, okay? So our reaction to that is going to be the tea party where we dress up as Native Americans and we dump all of the tea into the harbor. Reaction of this from Parliament is going to be the Coercive Acts. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna have the Massachusetts Government Act, which says, hey, you don't get any more um, town hall assemblies or government systems in Massachusetts. We're stopping them all. Okay, we reissue the Quartering Act. Okay, um, we now have the Justice Act, which says that trials for any capital crimes will now be moved to Britain, so you no longer are tried um, on your colonial home soil. And we're going to close the port of Boston, so it's shut down. This was the number one port for goods coming in to the New England area for businesses. So this is a huge hit. To top it all off, they're going to dump the Quebec Act on us, which is really going to just chap our hides even more because it extends the territory and the recognition um, to Catholics. So we don't like Catholics in the colonies. Uh, we put up with Maryland because it's already there, but otherwise we're not fond of the French and their Catholic ways. So the Quebec Act really makes us unhappy. We're going to have the Continental Congress come together. Okay, they're going to have a meeting in Philadelphia. They're going to write a letter to the king that says, hey, you're really great. We still want to be part of you. We just want representation in Parliament. Okay, but what Parliament comes back to is, is you do have representation. It's just virtual representation. Every Parliament member represents every British citizen. So therefore, you do have representation. So stop complaining. At this point, we're going to have countrysides kind of rising up, okay? So um, there's gonna be a rural network to help with the boycotts. We're going to start kind of gathering up our weapons and stockpiling in different places, 
All right, and there's going to be a fear in the south that the course of acts might make their way down there as well, and they don't want that. So we kind of have that tension hanging in the wind. All right, something to remember is that the loyalists during this time period are pro-crown, okay? And the patriots during this time period are the people rebelling against the king. All right, um, so tenant farmers and regulators, they're really going to be worried about um, where they fit in, okay, um, and how this is going to work out for them. 15 to 20% of the people in the colonies are going to remain loyal to the crown, so that's kind of still a big number. And then you're going to have the Quakers who are just like, hey, we're pacifists, so we're going to hang out over here and not help you. Okay, we're going to have a power vacuum then out in Ohio because General Gage is going to abandon his fort. And then Lord Dunmore is going to create a militia and go claim Kentucky. So he's going to argue that the crown has abandoned Virginia, so therefore he can do as he wishes. Um, fun fact is that Sybil Lettington okay, rode um, twice as far as good old Paul Revere in the horseback um, announcement that the British are coming, and she was only 16 years old. So a 16-year-old rode twice as far as Paul Revere. No storybooks written about her, but there should be Sybil Lettington, um, a really great character in history. So remember, we have the printing revolution right now. Thomas Paine's Common Sense is going to be published, and pretty much what it's going to say is to be part of a monarchy is to be part of an enslavement so the colonies need to rebel which is what we're going to do so we're going to declare our independence july 4th 1776 all right we're going to draft it all up thomas jefferson's going to write it we're all going to sign it okay and then to celebrate it we read it aloud to all of the colonies and we burn george the third in effigy because that's what you do to protest things all right, at this time, all right, we're going to have the Minutemen gathering up the weapons. We're going to have um, General Gage ordering that Patriot armories are seized. So the Minutemen are going to head to Concord. That's where we're going to have our Lexington and Concord issue. All right, the shot heard around the world, 700 Redcoats versus kind of a ragtag group of Minutemen. Um, and in the end, 73 British are going to die and 49 militiamen. So um, we held our own pretty well there. So... Um, all right, um, the fight's not going to go so well at first, okay, we're going to lose Breed's Hill, we're going to lose Bunker Hill, uh, it's going to be a little challenging for us, but that's okay, we are scrappy and we are going to fight back, um, and then in the South, Lord Dunmore, being a loyalist, so he's pro-crown, he's going to organize white and black regiments, which is a little cutting edge, um, and the Patriots are going to get a little worried, um, about the unrest, and they're going to call for the splitting, so... Um, there we go. And then Daniel Boone, okay, um, is going to be occupying Kentucky. So a bunch of settlers down in the South who moved to help Lord Dunmore, uh, with the Kentucky situation, they're all going to be settling back in the back country and they'll come back and they'll help us with some guerrilla warfare with the British soon.